So to start things off then we'll build our backend check and essentially what this is going to do is output a JSON string that we can then easily grab with JavaScript and then check if the username exists or not. So essentially what this check.php page is going to be doing is it's going to be returning something like the following. So it will be uh, brackets like this, it will have exists here and then it will have a true or false value. So inside of our browser, we can head over to that file and we see here exists true. And I'm using a plugin for Chrome, which shows me um, a nicely formatted JSON object here. But if you're not, then that's fine. It, you'll just see text that looks much like this. And that's not a problem. It will still work fine. So this is our end result. But we obviously want to be able to pass a type in here. So I want to say, well, I want to check if a username exists. And the value of this is going to be, say, Alex. And then we want to get this back to say exists true or exists false. And then we can chop and change these around. So this could be maybe checking if an email exists. And then we could type an email address in just here. So that's what we want to end up being able to do. So let's head over to our PHP file and let's open some PHP tags. Now the first thing to do is establish where this data is being stored and where we're going to get it from. So I have a database created called website and I'm going to create a table in here called users. You might already have a users table that exists at the moment. That's absolutely fine. I assume you're going to have an auto incrementing ID. Uh, this basically just means that every record you insert, uh, this will increment by one. And that's obviously a primary key and has an auto increment on there. So we have a username here. We have an email. So I'm just adding fields in here. And I'm just going to add an extra dummy field created, which is going to be a date time. And for the username, this is going to be a varchar. And that's going to be a length of 20. And the email will also be a varchar. And we'll say 255 for that. So remember, we're just testing here. Um, so we can insert some dummy data. So I'll enter an email and then the created that date. So we've got one record at the moment, Alex, uh, Alex at codecourse.com and the created that date. And then we'll enter another one as well. So we'll say Billy, Billy at codecourse.com and then we'll do now. Okay, so we've got two records in here. We know what our database structure looks like. We can now start to connect to our database within this file and then check. Now you probably have a database connection established somewhere else in your application if you aren't starting this from scratch. So you'll probably already have that connection available, in which case just require in the files that you need to be able to access that database connection. Otherwise, I'm going to just quickly instantiate a PDO uh, object here and I'm going to connect my database up here exclusively within this file. So uh, I'm using the MySQL, MySQL driver. The host is localhost or 127.0.0.1. And the database name, as I've already said, is website. My username here is root. And my password here is just root as well. So we've now got a connection to that database. So that looks like uh, it's going to be fine. So now what we want to do is, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to be able to pass in the type here and the value. So if the type is email and the value is alex at cocourse.com, we're going to look for this value within this field on our users table. And if it exists, we can return that it does exist. So we'll do an if statement here to check if both of these exist in the get super global, which basically just means have they been passed through in the query string? And we access the, the uh, name that we gave that in the query string by the key. So type and we have value as well, like so. So if that's the case, then inside of here, we can continue with our code. We're not going to provide any else here. We're just going to blank, uh, sort of completely return a blank page if the user hasn't supplied these um, because, you know, there's uh, no real point in returning a, a, an array uh, for an error. Um, you can do this if you want, but either way. So we'll store the type here, which is dollar underscore get type. And we'll also store the value here as well, so we can access these quite easily. So value. Now for the type, we're going to be checking that this exists within an array, because what we don't want to do is we don't want to allow this to be anything at all, um, because you might just be out. You might just want to put it straight into a query. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a switch on type and then I'm going to choose which one is appropriate. But I'm also going to include the in array function as well to check just in case you want to take a different approach because remember you don't want to blindly allow people to just uh, choose any value from here and then place it into a query whether it's escaped or not so I'm going to trim this first of all and I'm also going to trim the value as well all this is doing here is it's removing white space from the left and the right hand side of these strings and for the type as well I want to um, use the str to lower function so we've now got both these values stored we're going to check that this type exists within an array but first of all let's define how our output is going to look so our output is going to be an array here and we're going to have exists false you can set this to true by default if you want really doesn't matter and in here we're going to have our little if statement to say if in array type and then in here we're going to define uh, the allowed types so this is username and email you can define this array in a variable up here if you want but I'm just gonna put them straight into here so we have username and email so if that if all that's worked uh, I'm just gonna echo OK then oops we've got a little pause error let's have a look here ah there we go extra bracket on there so this is okay if we were to not include the value it doesn't say okay and if the type was to be something other than username or email so for example created then we don't get okay so we're only allowing this to happen within that so now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create a switch here with a case for either the username or the email just in case you need to do something else other than just a query within here um, you can go ahead and modify this depending on how you uh, are working on the back end you might even not be working with PHP in this case you would do something entirely different to this uh, but either way let's carry on with this just so um, it's as flexible as possible for you to go ahead and use so we have a switch here and we're gonna have two cases the first case is going to be username so in here we need to do a query to grab the count from the users table where the username equals the value that's been provided now otherwise we have another case here and we're not going to include a default here that's going to be for email and we're going to do exactly the same query but we're just going to modify the email field you can of course do one query and inject in the type but it's probably best to hard code this just from a security point of view and that's why I'm taking the slightly longer route just so it's a little bit more secure so let's take a look at what the query looks like for the username and then we can essentially duplicate it for the email I'm gonna name this variable check here so we're gonna say DB prepare so we're gonna do a prepared statement with PDO I'm gonna bring this down a little bit just for readability and we're gonna select count on asterisk which is optimized within MySQL to return uh, the count and we're going to alias this using the as keyword as count so we can access that as a property when we fetch the object so we're grabbing that obviously from the users table and we're grabbing that where the username equals a particular value so we're going to create a placeholder here so we can execute this later passing in the placeholder and that's all we need to do within here so we can basically copy this and paste that for this change username to email and there we go so we're selecting um, the count so that's either going to be zero one two three it should never be two or three because uh, you'd obviously check that there weren't duplicate records but now after the switch down here what we can do is execute that query so all we do is we say check execute this is now going to actually run the query and we need to pass in this value here now obviously the value is the value that's been passed in uh, to the URL so we just say value value so that's a, a little array in there so now let's do a print R just so we can see what's going on here so I'm going to do a print R on check fetch object this is going to grab the record as an object so when I refresh now you can see it says uh, we've got a class here 
uh, an object here, sorry, and we've got a count of one because we know that the email alex at codecourse.com exists. If, for example, we were to change this to username and we wanted to check if the username Dale exists, we get a count of zero because we know that inside of our database we don't have a, a username called Dale. However, if we were to change this to Billy, we get a count of one, or Alex, we get a count of one. You get the idea. Make sure this is working, and then you're pretty much 98% there. So what we now need to do is change this output to uh, set this exists key to true or false based on the fact it, uh, we have a positive count or a negative count, i.e. zero. So all we do is we say output exists, and we want to assign a value to this, and we're going to uh, use a ternary operator here to say check, fetch object, much like we just did within the print R. Checking on the count property, we know that this count property exists. If that's a positive number, we can assign true to this. Otherwise, we assign false. So all this is saying is assign something to this exists key in our output array up here. If the count is positive, assign true to this, otherwise assign false. That's all we need to do. So we've now got, if we just do a print R on our output, we now have exists one, exists one, exists false. So that's how it's represented, true or false values when we do a print R. But that's not good enough because this is going to be really difficult to uh, pick up with our JavaScript front end as the user's typing. But what we need to do now is uh, use the JSON encode function to basically take out array and encode that so it, it turns into a JSON string. So we echo JSON encode output like so. So JSON, if you're not aware, stands for J uh, JavaScript Object Notation. And it's basically uh, just a uh, data interchange format. So it just means that we, within JavaScript now, we can pick up this exists key by doing data.exists, checking that equals false. Uh, jQuery will automatically parse this JSON string for us and convert it into a, or parse it to a JavaScript object. So we then have the exists property that we can check this value being true or false. So obviously this is now working. We've now completely done the back end. This is all the code that we need. You can go ahead and modify it depending on uh, how your application works. But now what we can do is we can focus on building our form, creating our JavaScript file, linking that in and actually putting all this functionality together.